Starting off this countdown, we have The Wrong Turn. So this is a real story reported by four university students. Their names were never disclosed to protect their identity. But apparently in May of 1972, they were on their way back from a Utah rodeo and headed to their dorm. On their way back, they decided to take a shortcut. But that was their first mistake. While traveling along this unknown road, the path suddenly turned into gravel, and then all of a sudden they hit a dead end. So they had to travel all the way back down the road that they just came. However, while doing so, they noticed that the path had changed. It didn't look like the same original path that they originally took. All of a sudden, they saw something glowing in the distance. They drove towards it and found themselves at a weird building with a neon sign. The neon sign was in a language that none of them recognized. When they pulled towards the building for help, these weird tall men came out towards them. They seemed confused and angry. One got close to the car and one of the girls screamed. Tall man didn't appear to be human, so they sped out of there. While driving away, they saw weird egg-shaped vehicles following them. They sped until the vehicles stopped following them. Finally, they somehow reached the road that they were originally on. To this day, they believe that they somehow traveled to another universe through that road. Isn't that creepy? Hit that thumbs up button if you agree. In our ninth spot, we have the lift ride at the disappearing store. Just recently, Reddit user NoBookkeeper3991 decided to take a lift to go to the dollar store. It wasn't too far from his place, and it wasn't complicated to get to. A couple minutes go by, and he should have reached the store by now, but they couldn't find it. The store just randomly wasn't there anymore. In fact, the whole street looked different. Both the dude and the lift driver started to panic. Everything changed in front of them in a flash. It was super weird. So yeah, the guy didn't end up going to the dollar store that day. Apparently, they rode into a parallel universe or something. And of course, days later, the missing dollar store magically reappeared again. Moving on at number eight, we have the disappearing professor. A well-known faculty member at the University of the Andes disappeared on campus without a trace. According to multiple witnesses, they saw the professor leave one of the university's buildings cross the parking lot and get into his car. Many people saw this happen. In fact, people were calling at him and waving to him as he got into his car. But his car sat there unmoving for a while. A couple of students actually approached the car to see what was going on and found the car empty. The professor was nowhere to be found. To this day, the professor has never returned. It's assumed that when he got into his car, he was transported to a different universe. Moving on at number seven, we have the Green Children of Woolpit. Back in the 13th century, two weird children randomly appeared in the village of Woolpit in England. The two were brother and sister and had weird greenish colored skin. To make things weirder, they spoke a language no one heard of, and they were dressed in weird clothing. They also didn't want to eat anything except raw beans. Eventually, they were taken in, but sadly, the boy became sick and passed away. The girl, on the other hand, started to like normal food and started to lose the green color in her skin. After learning to speak English, she said that her and her brother were from a place where people had green skin and the sun didn't shine bright. They were herding their dad's cattle when all of a sudden they heard a loud noise. Bam! They were in a new place. Now the girl ended up growing up and marrying a man and starting a whole new life there but it seems like the two traveled there from another dimension. Coming in at number six, we have the campsite. A couple of years ago, a woman and her friends were out camping when they heard music coming from the forest. They followed the sound thinking that they were alone and came across a small stone cabin. The weirdest part? When they approached the cabin, they saw people dressed in 17th century fashion. One of the friends was fascinated and went over to the cabin to try and go inside. As she was about to enter, one of her friends pulled her away. As that happened, half of her body became paralyzed, the half that entered the cabin. It's believed that she partially entered another dimension and that threw off her nervous system which resulted in half of her body becoming paralyzed. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the deaths. This story is pretty intense, so buckle your seatbelts. But basically, one night this woman had a dream about someone she knew dying. Three days later, that dream came true and the person passed away. This has happened to her a number of times. She falls asleep, has a dream that someone dies, and in exactly three days, that dream comes true and that person passes away. 
I mean, that sounds like a horror movie plot, like if you agree. Anyways, this has happened to two of her colleagues, three of her grandparents, her great grandfather, her friend's grandfather, two school teachers, three of her friends, and a random lady she met for five minutes one day at work. So maybe don't become friends with her because then she'll have a dream about you and then you'll die. I'm just kidding. But some people believe that she's actually hopping from different universes. In one universe, the person has already passed away. When she jumps back to her current universe, the person isn't dead yet. And that's what triggers these dreams. They're just memories from other universes that she has traveled to. In our fourth spot, we have the different family home. Back in the day, a woman named Carol Chase McKelleny decided to visit her old family town and area. But when she was driving down her old street, she couldn't find the old house that she grew up in. In fact, all the houses on the street look completely different. She then decided to drive to the street where her grandmother used to live on. But when she got there, she found that the street was completely different as well. She then was driving through the town noticing that almost everything was changed. Like the cemetery where her parents were buried wasn't there anymore. Or a strip of restaurants and hotels was now just a graffiti covered area. She started feeling very uncomfortable and drove off. A few years later, Carol's father died and they went back to the cemetery to bury him with his parents. Surprisingly, the cemetery magically reappeared and everything about the town was back to normal. So she believes that during her other trip, she managed to visit her old town from a different dimension. In our third spot, we have the birth certificate. Just recently, Reddit user Professional Echo 348 went to get a new birth certificate. They were at town hall when they saw that their mother's middle name was not right. It was written as Victoria, but her real middle name was Virginia. So she asked the clerk what was up with it. Even her last birth certificate had her mom's middle name as Virginia. Sadly, her mom passed away 17 years ago, so she couldn't just phone up her mom and ask her what was up. Plus, she even named her daughter's middle name after her mom's middle name. So she decided to dig into this some more. She was going through old files when she saw that her mother was once married to a man named Pierce which again was wrong. His name was actually Pierre, not Pierce. So sometime in her life, she switched universes. One where her mother's middle name was Victoria and her stepfather's name was Pierce. Coming in at number two, we have the different girlfriend. One day, a guy woke up only to find that he had been sleeping next to some random girl. He freaked out and the girl, whose name was Laura, was all like, WTF, we've been dating for a couple of years now. How don't you remember? Stop fooling around, this isn't funny. Sure enough, his apartment was filled with framed photos of them together. What's weird is that that wasn't his girlfriend. He was dating a girl named Maria, not Laura. So apparently he went to bed with Maria and woke up beside a new girlfriend, Laura. So somehow he managed to switch universes in his sleep. That is insane. And does that count as cheating? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> and in our number one spot, we have Lorena Garcia. Lorena Garcia lived a pretty mundane life until one day everything changed forever. Her life literally got flipped upside down. So she woke up one day and noticed her bed sheets were different than normal. She kind of just ignored it and went on with her day. But as she made her way to work, she noticed little things were off. Again, she ignored it as she arrived at work. But when she got to her department, she realized it wasn't her department. She thought that she was on the wrong floor, but she wasn't. She had worked there for the last 20 years, but today she worked in a different department. She even looked herself up on her works database. She worked at the same company, but it said she worked at a different department. Then things continued to get weird. Her former boyfriend disappeared without a trace. There was no sign of him anywhere. There was not even a sign that the two had even dated. In fact, she hired someone to see what happened to him. Turns out he never existed, at least not in this universe. Her current boyfriend was someone completely different. So somehow when Lorena went to bed, she managed to travel to another universe. Isn't that crazy? Like imagine waking up and having a completely new job and partner. I would freak out and probably go insane. Starting us off like we always do in at number 10, have you guys ever heard of the man from Tord? Well, this might actually be a real life time traveler. And this isn't just any time traveler. This is a time traveler who might have come from a parallel universe 
very similar to ours. Let me tell you guys this story. Back in 1954, officials at a Tokyo airport in Japan were confronted by a traveler from Europe with a passport from a country called Torrid. If you guys look on any map and search Torrid or try to search for it, well, you'll notice that it actually doesn't exist. So obviously this has to be a fake passport, right? But why would someone create a fake passport with a made up country? I mean, it's pretty silly. So officials looked more into this claim. The man from apparently Torrid seemed very angry for the holdup and he was serious when he told officials where he was from. When he was asked to show on a map where this place is located, he wasn't able to exactly point to it because it wasn't labeled, but it was located around here. He circles a place called Andorra. The man stated that this is his third trip this year to Japan from his company that's located in Torrid, his country. He said Torrid has been a country for thousands of years, but officials could not find proof of this claim. The man was taken into a nearby hotel where he was closely monitored while officials figured out this man's story. Like, what is going on? He did have a passport that showed Torrid on it, and the strange thing is this passport actually looked like an official one. Well, the next morning this man seemed to have just disappeared, and there's no way out of the hotel room without being seen. He was surrounded the whole time and monitored. Also, all of the paperwork the officials took in also seemed to disappear. I mean, is this real life right now? Apparently this is a 100% true story. I personally don't believe it myself. I'm pretty sure there's a movie out there based on this as well based on a true story it says it's insane could this man actually be from a parallel universe well that's a question we may never have answered from there at number nine let's talk about the Mandela effect well this is a theory that maybe some of us have been living in an alternate universe the Mandela effect is when you think something is one way but as it turns out it's something completely different. It's like an alternate reality for some of us. For an example, take a look at this. Do you guys think it's Looney Tunes or Looney Tunes? Is it spelled T-U-N-E-S or T-O-O-N-S? Let me know in the comment section below. I'll give you guys a few moments. Go down there, let me know what you guys think, and I'm gonna reveal it right now. Well, if you guys said Looney Tunes, T-O-O-N-S, well, you might be from a parallel universe because you're wrong. But how scary is that? Like 50% of the population is wrong. Are we all from a different universe? I thought it was T-O-O-N-S. There is no way it's T-U-N-E-S. Here's another one. Is it Berenstein Bears or Berenstein Bears? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, is it Oscar Mayer or Oscar Mayer? Is it Skechers or Skechers? Well, let me know all your guys' answers in the comment section below. Number eight, let's move on to a woman from a parallel universe. I'm talking about Lorena Garcia Gordo. Well, this is her story. On the morning back in 2008, she woke up to discover that there was differences in her life. Differences that made her really wonder if she woke up in another universe. When she woke up, her sheets were a different color. Well, maybe she forgot that she changed her sheets, so uh, not a big deal here. Well, get this. When she went to her office job, a place that she's worked at for the past 20 years, years, that's when she really noticed like differences. She noticed new people and she worked for a different department. She was very confused so she actually called an ex-boyfriend she dated six months ago and she was with this person for seven years but when she called the number she discovered that it wasn't her boyfriend's phone number and the person she was looking for actually doesn't exist. And at one point she thought maybe she was drugged or had alcohol in her. She's very confused. She's not in the right state of mind due to the drugs. So so she went to the doctors and tests showed that there was nothing inside of her. Lorena had all these memories that apparently never happened. She told her family she remembered a shoulder surgery that her younger sister had, but she asked her and that never happened as well. Her family thought she was going crazy. No one could figure out what was going on and how she has all these different memories that just never happened. I mean, detailed memories. Did she wake up in an alternate reality or a parallel universe? This is also something known as the Mandela effect that I was telling you guys about. It's when you remember a lot of things differently that has happened that it actually hasn't happened. But how do you remember a younger sister having surgery and she never did? I mean, I don't think that is part of the Mandela effect. At number seven, we have the boy who lived before. He used to say, when I was a girl, I had black hair. Or he'd say, I used to have earrings like that when I was a girl. The stay-at-home mom wondered, where was he getting these ideas? Luke's answer, 
changed their lives forever. Well, this is Luke, who is from Ohio, and he believes he was reincarnated. His past life was a woman named Pam. He said that he died in his past life, and he went up to heaven, and then he was reborn again to what you guys see right now, Luke. Well, kids say the darnest things, but Luke's mom was really confused. So she tested Luke in his memory of Pam, and what was revealed was very scary. He said that he died in a fire in Chicago. He said he jumped out of a building. Listen to this. In March 1993, a massive fire raced through the property, trapping most residents. 19 died including a woman in her 30s named Pamela Robinson. Pam had jumped out of a window to her death. I was really kind of weirded out by it at this point. Is this real life right now? I don't even know how I would feel after confirming Luke's story that he remembers everything about his past life. This kid is only five years old. I know they have imaginary stories, but this one went into great detail. He was continued to be tested and he was shown a bunch of images of random people. One of them was, was Pam. She was mixed in there and he was easily able to pick her out and said she looks very familiar. And he pointed to the correct one. This is Pam. It took me a couple days to wrap my head around it. I, I couldn't sleep. I thought about it constantly. The family then looked into Pam's life to see if this is actually a real person. And she, she was. And then they started comparing her life to his life. And there was way too many similarities. So that Pam was a big like Stevie Wonder fan and Luke like really likes that era of music. She played the keyboard a lot. And one of the things that Luke, his favorite toy at the time was this little um, tiny piano that he would tote around with them. All right, number six. This one isn't a story, but it's more of a theory. So let's talk about the theory of having infinity universes. This theory actually scares a lot of people. I mean, the idea that our universe is just so minuscule in comparison to the infinite amount of universes. There's an idea that at any moment, our universe could just be erased like an instance. It's almost like just imagine the real life Thanos snap and then boom, everyone on earth became the victim. There's actually a phobia called aperiophobia. This is a fear of infinity or even the fear of living forever. Would you guys be afraid if you can live forever? Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on that. Uh, for me, I'm not sure how it would feel. I mean, everyone around you would just be moving on to the afterlife and you're just kind of here on earth. Stephen Hawking believed we can live in multi-universes and it was actually his last paper he wrote before he passed away. So is this idea really that crazy? Well, I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Number five, we have Godness Allison. She's a YouTuber who has claimed she indeed traveled through time. She went through another timeline. Hello everyone, Goddess Allison here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about parallel timelines or parallel universes. And the reason for this is because I visited a parallel timeline. She was taken into another world and this took place in 2016 in October. She was taken early in the morning between 3.30 a.m. to about 6.30 in the morning. Well, Goddess spent three days in an alternate universe where she stayed in a hospital for three days. I think this parallel universe is called the Psychiatric Center. Well, this is a really scary story because people do believe that they have traveled into another universe. And wait till you guys hear about the kid who can actually prove that he lived in another time frame as another person. He's coming up at number one, so make sure you stay tuned. Well, going back to Goddess for a moment, while watching her video, it's very confusing. I don't know anything she's, I don't know anything she's talking about because I'm not that smart of a person, but to me, it kind of sounds like she might be making some things up. I think after having this experience, I think that we all live in one same universe that operates on the same laws of physics and quantum physics, on the same laws of perhaps geometric fractal that of the plutonic solids that fit inside each other. Okay, my brain kind of hurts with all of that uh, information, so let, let's move on. Number four. What I'm about to tell you is something that I haven't even told my children, nor my grandchildren. My own wife doesn't even know what I'm about to tell you. So this is Alexandra Smith who claims that he has traveled to the year 2118. That's about 99 years into the future. That is absolutely insane, but kind of cool. I would have so many questions for this guy, like did Elon Musk actually make it to Mars? Did we become cyborgs? Is YouTube still around? Is top 10 channel still around? 
Well, this guy's pretty lucky to have the opportunity to know what the future unfolds. We didn't know if it would work. He sat me in a small room and we had many meetings. I had meetings with various scientists telling me what to expect, telling me what to do during the process of the actual time traveling itself. This guy actually believes that the government and secret scientists, like the secret society, actually sent him to the future. Number three, I really don't believe that time travel is real, but then again, there's been events in history and even stories that people have told that might show small signs that traveling to another universe or time traveling might actually be plausible. Have you guys ever seen this picture right here? Well, it's a black and white picture, but if you guys look right over here, you guys will notice that this woman is holding something. Well, that something is a cell phone. Well, let me put this into perspective for you guys. This picture was taken in 1938. Cell phones were invented by Martin Cooper in 1973. He was only 10 years old in 1938, so how was this picture even taken? Well, how does that woman have that cell phone? Phones weren't even thought of. There are many conspiracy theories and scary stories that surround this woman, and why or how she has a cell phone. It doesn't make sense, no one even knows who this woman is. This is a very interesting picture that is just simply unexplained. Maybe she's a time traveler, and Alexander Smith might have actually traveled to the year 2118. Number two, we have Paul Dynek, who is a Swiss language teacher who went into a coma from 1921 to 1922. When he came out of his coma, he shared a fascinating story with the world. Well, he didn't directly share it, let me explain. When he came out of his coma, he said that he traveled to the year 3906 AD as a man named Andrew Northman, who was a famous physician. When he woke up, he acquired a great understanding of physics, and he went on to write down his experience in a book he published titled Valley of the Roses. He talked about what the future was like, Earth was able to colonize Mars in about 200 years, but there was a tragedy to the 20 million people living on Mars. So I guess that kind of answers the question we had before, did Elon Musk reach Mars? I guess it's a no. And if everyone dies on Mars, maybe we should try and colonize somewhere else. The scary part about this whole thing is the fact that Paul's journal entry, which was very detailed, he actually didn't want anyone to read them or even know about them. It was only when he gave his journals to his students they released it to the public, and that's when Paul's story was known. Can this story be real? I guess we're gonna have to wait 200 years to find out if this man was right. Finally, number one, we have yet another boy, Cameron, who has memories of a past life. Now, this gets crazy. And he's also five years old, which is actually the same age as the boy Luke we talked about on this list at number seven. Well, since Cameron was able to talk, he started talking about a past life, a life that took place 220 miles away from where he lives. I lived in the White House with my mom and dad and my three brothers and sisters. The big problem with that story is that Cameron only has one brother, so who is he talking about? As Cameron got older, his story remained the same. It only got more detailed. He remembers his former parents' name. Many doctors and experts have actually taken interest in this fascinating story. Psychologists has even met with them. They met with Cameron and the family to find out if the story is real or maybe it's just all made up. Really interesting. Basically, how Cameron describes his world really seems to me quite different from how children with imaginary friends and imaginary worlds describe their experiences. Cameron, as he got older, kept asking his mom if they can visit where he used to live, and the family, over time, just said, yeah, let's go. Well, they traveled 220 miles away to the small town to see what would happen, to see if what he's saying actually exists. The mother thought maybe this would convince Cameron that this is just a fantasy in his head, and this past life, yeah, it never happened. Well, he remembered everything. They actually found the house that he described in much detail. If you guys want to see the full documentary, it's really fascinating to me, it's really interesting to me. Well, it's called The Boy Who Lived Before. Check it out on YouTube, it's really good. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the infinite versions of our universe. Okay, 
Let's start off at the beginning. Well, the beginning of what is our observable universe, which was the Big Bang that happened 13.8 billion years ago. This is when our observable universe was born, which is finite, but the universe itself, which our universe is a small part of, is infinite and could have been born infinite. Since we can put a timeline on when our universe came into existence, which is that 13.8 billion years we just talked about, we can place a timeline on the things in our own universe. Everything in our universe is finite. But beyond our universe and the stars and galaxies and matter and all of that sciencey stuff, is the universe, which would lead us to believe that there are many more infinite universes that are just like our own, but that are beyond our knowledge because of the fact that the speed of light, as well as the beginning of ours, the Big Bang, is finite. If there is an infinite amount of universe out there, then it only seems reasonable to believe that the same sort of creation of our finite universe happened an infinite amount of times. In our number nine spot today, we have infinite universes. Piggybacking off of that last point, we have the fact that there just might be even more universes. Like, not just more of our kind of universe, but more of THE universe. The Big Bang started off our universe, but it was not the beginning of everything. The Big Bang, which we all know happened when? 13.8 billion years ago was the first time the universe could be described as hot, dense, and full of matter and antimatter and radiation and all of that, but there was stuff going on before that happened. Prior to the Big Bang, there was a period of cosmic inflation. This inflation leads to the growing of space-time, and this means that if that period occurred for an infinite amount of time, there could be an infinite amount of universes that are all finite, and one of these universes happens to contain ours. Does that make sense? This video really is all a person needs to feel exceptionally small and very insignificant. In our number eight spot today, we have daughter universes. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far. Let's try and make this the universe where this video has the most likes. Let's do it. This one is just a theory about if there are multiple parallel universes that exist and what they contain. This is where the theory of daughter universes comes into play. It is possible that multiple universes may follow the theory of quantum mechanics, which is how subatomic particles behave. Following the laws of probability, the daughter universes happen when you are faced with a decision. In our reality, you make your decision and it plays out one way, but in the daughter universes, they would each involve you making every other decision you could have made in that moment, which would then lead to whatever outcome that decision would have ended up leading to. This just means that there may be a universe for the opposite of every decision you've ever made in your life, and one for every decision anyone has ever made. How likely is this? I'm not sure, but if we ever find a way to jump to other universes, there goes the days of regret. In our number seven spot today, we have bubble universes. For this one, we need to imagine our universe as a bubble, which it kind of is. The swelling bubble of our universe is just one bubble among many. Well, as we all now know, it is possibly just one among an infinite amount, all of which are swelling and expanding. All these bubbles make up the multiverse. This itself is of course just a theory that was made in an attempt to understand the origins and beginnings of our universe, but now it is being researched further. Physicists have begun studies on how and when universes might collide and bubble up together. I do understand that this is not concrete proof or evidence, but we wouldn't be researching it if it wasn't a possibility. This research could potentially lead us in the direction where we get to see some real proof, or at the very least, give us a better understanding into the theories of how multiple universes exist and how they could potentially interact with one another. In our number six spot today, we have the lack of evidence. This evidence is more so about the lack of evidence there is to say that the multiverse doesn't exist. Many scientists find the idea of the multiverse alarming or even unscientific because of the fact that there's no way for us to test for it. There is no way to make predictions that fall in line with data and no way to really verify its existence, whether it's one parallel universe or an infinite amount. But there isn't really any evidence or data to support the theory that we are the only universe that exists. If our universe was created basically out of happenstance, what could stop another universe from being created at the same time or out of a similar happenstance? The idea and theory of the multiverse itself is relatively quite young and new, so it is possible that we will find the evidence to persuade most of us to one side or another, but as of right now, 
anything is possible. And maybe in another parallel universe, we already know all about the existence of this one. Maybe there's another me watching me make this video being like, oh, you don't know anything. In our number five spot today, we have the cold spot. The cold spot was first discovered in 2004, and it is basically just what it sounds like. It's an area in the universe that is slightly colder than that surrounding it. And when I say slightly, I really do mean very slightly. But when I call it an area, I'm talking about a huge one as it is around 1.8 billion light years across. It was first believed that this area may be colder due to a lack of galaxies, but a newer study suggested that that is not possible, which led researchers down a different path in search of new theories as to why the cold spot exists. One of the most exciting is the theory that this may have occurred due to a collision between our universe and another bubble universe. A bubble universe is what we just spoke about in the last part and they make up the multiverse, which would be the uncountable realms that all sit side by side, but that are in higher dimensions than our senses are able to interpret. This of course is a theory and it will require a lot of time and research before we can say for certain, but it truly is kind of crazy to think that a huge colder area of the universe could be due to a bump in with another universe entirely. In our number four spot today, we have the CMB. After the Big Bang, it took around 300,000 years for things to cool down enough in order to allow atoms to form and to allow light to travel freely. This was known as the recombination, and during this time, that is when the cosmic microwave background began. The CMB is electromagnetic radiation that fills all of space, and while the space in between stars and planets and such may seem to be completely dark, the CMB is there and can sometimes, through sensitive enough technology, be seen as a kind of glow. So, how how does this play into what we're talking about today? Well, scientists noticed a sort of bruise on the CMB during research, which left them wondering why. This is what led to this next parallel universe theory. If our universes are all like bubbles and one bumps into the other, it's possible that they may merge even just for a second. This could cause some parts of one universe to spill into the other before eventually parting ways again, but this collision surely would leave some sort of a mark. And that mark just may be the bruise we saw in the CMB. In our number three spot today, we have the CMB part two. So you know what the CMB is now, and there's another thing we are looking for in it that might give us a sign of the multiverse. We thought we found evidence of this back in 2014, but it may have been a false detection, but we continue to look. Gravitational waves, which are ripples in space and time, are what we are looking for right now. The waves would have been left over from the Big Bang, and they could be putting tiny curls into the CMB. If found, this would prove the theory of cosmic inflation, which we discussed close to the beginning of this video in number nine, which would then lead us to the creation of multiple universes. It's all linked together in the most insane ways, but the universe is very cool and very complex. In our number two spot today, we have the Mandela Effect. So thinking about what we just talked about with the bruise and the CMB, and if our bubble universes really did collide with some other universe, and they had a moment where they may have been interconnected in some way, then this would explain the Mandela Effect. If you don't know, the Mandela Effect began being widely recognized when people began to swear that they could remember Nelson Mandela passing away in the 1980s. This is of course weird since he actually passed away in 2013. This time discrepancy had people obviously confused and it has happened with many other things such as the Berenstein Bears, the movie Kazam, and honestly a whole bunch of things. There are many theories as to why the Mandela Effect happens and one of them certainly is the belief in multiple universes and some sort of crossover happening between the two. This coupled with the possibility of colliding universes is hard to comprehend, but it does kind of make sense. In our number one spot today, we have the strange particle. This might be the most concrete evidence, but we still don't really know what it means. This evidence came to us originally in 2016, but it took a few years for it to be interpreted in the way that might suggest the potential of a parallel universe. During experiments and research in the Antarctic, researchers captured what seemed to be the signal of a high energy particle. This would be all well and fine, except for the fact that instead of coming down from above, this particle seemed to be exploding out of the ground. Despite multiple attempts to explain why the signal was appearing this way, scientists were left with not a lot of options, and one of those has to do with the fact that this strange particle just may be proof of another parallel universe that is both exceptionally similar, but also the complete opposite of our own. In order to explain this particle, there would need to be the existence of another universe that was created during the same Big Bang that created our own and exists in parallel with ours. 
But this universe would have to be a mirror of our own, where left is right and right is left and positive is negative and time runs backwards. It's both the most simple and most complex idea that all started with one tiny, strange particle. Mm -hmm.